bit early, I think. How are we all? Okay. Yes, fine, thank you. Hello, Rob. Hey, lads, you okay? We'll stick with current format, please, folks. So we're obviously a day closer into the game, so we'll do uh, we'll do our, our rights holder broadcasters first, and then anything else it needs doing for. We can go out immediately after that first section, and then we'll do a, an embargoed section for 10:30 tonight. Um, and uh, and obviously the whole thing will we'll be open to everybody, but nothing live during this uh, during this first section, please. Uh, we're going to start with Aiden, please. Hi, Craig. You okay? Hi. Um, can I start with some injury news first, please? Yeah. Thankfully, we've got everyone's fit, clean bill of health. Everyone to choose from. So uh, my first little problem, little issue. Why was that performance against Liverpool so much different compared to the previous matches leading up to that? Well, I think we've had it in previous performances. I think uh, obviously everything that went on and around it leading up to the game. I think um, the players dealt really admirably with the pressure. I think um, ultimately it's about results. We've had results before. But I'm hoping that that's not the, the be all and end all. We have to make sure that we kick kick start now, and um, you know, it, Hull is our, now our focus. Obviously, you were in and around the squad for the last few years, but has anything been different just in the last eight days in terms of in terms of the mood? No, I've spoke before about the players' professionalism. Um, you know, the training. We try and be upbeat. I think uh, at any training ground, everyone will always tell you the environment is important. Uh, results have a massive bearing on that environment. What do you know about who the club are talking to in terms of a long-term successor in the manager's role? I don't, and uh, I'll leave that to the powers that be. I've been asked just to take the next game. Um, I've been informed that we'll sit down after that. So that's, that's the game. The remit is prepare the team for Hull, uh, see if we can get the same result in terms of three points, and then we'll sit down after that. I'm quite comfortable with that. Um, as I say, um, it's, I've been told, I've been kept informed. Um, and I'm quite comfortable with it. Do you still retain any hope of getting it yourself? I think um, I'm learning about the job as I go along. I've said before I've been an assistant for a long time. It's given me the opportunity to get a good feel for it. Uh, I've enjoyed working with the players. Uh, I enjoy more than anything the game. The game is the be all and end all, but the results are the most important. And obviously it was more enjoyable getting the three points on Monday night. Fantastic start for you, obviously, on, on Monday. But if you did continue to get results, would you be disappointed if you didn't get it, seeing as how you've been part of so much of the success here in recent seasons? Again, I'm not looking that far ahead. I, I've been told to prepare for this game. We'll sit down and the, I'm sure the owners will give me their views after that. Roy Hodgson's been linked with the job, of course. Is he the kind of guy who could take the club forward if they didn't go with you? Again, I think it's been pure speculation. I think there's lots of names being mentioned and um, you know, it's not for me to, to speculate on names. What did you personally do different ahead of Liverpool? Because I mean, it was, the team was unrecognisable from earlier in the season and much more reminiscent of, of how they played last season. Yeah, I think we've, we've shown that in patches this season. Um, I made sure that uh, in terms of the mentality, I had to get into the players' mentality because, as you say, they had a lot of criticism. I had to deal with a lot of criticism over the last few days. And it was about having trust in each other, trust in themselves to make the right decisions on the pitch. What did you actually say to them as regards, you mentioned the word mentality and things like that. I mean, did you, did you have much input from, from a point of view of changing that? Well, again, we spoke about our identity. I've mentioned it a few times. I asked them what they want to be remembered for in their identity. And it was about, you know, togetherness, unity. Uh, it was all about the desire and the energy levels. And we came up with that together. But it's been nothing different than, than the whole season that we've tried to do. I think, um, you know, ultimately the game took care of itself. I think the, the tempo was set in the first five minutes. Um, and then we managed to get the first goal. I felt the first goal was going to be massively important on Monday night and we managed to get that and it settled everyone down. Were you confident in yourself before the game that you would get the response that, that you got? Because obviously it was you know, proved, um, proved decisive, didn't it? I think hand on heart, I was unsure. I thought um, if I make sure that the play players are ready, do everything I can, once they did cross that white line, We've done everything as, as staff we can and we're hoping then that the result goes our way. 
this game against Hull is every bit as big as Liverpool, isn't it? I think it's bigger. I think it's the next one. We have to put back to back, try and put back to back wins. I think it's, we spoke to them about the 13 game season as it was. It's now 12 games with uh, obviously Hull starting. We have to put in another performance. It is a big game for us. And I think as players, they realise that. Given the pedigree of the squad, are you confident in your heart that you can probably pull away from this situation relatively quickly? Yes, I think we, the first start is getting the back-to-back -back wins, but I'm quite confident with the squad that we got that we can pull away. Just one from left field from me. Um, IFAB have suggested a potential rule change this week in that only captains would be able to talk to referees during matches. Um, what do you think of that? Can that work in practice? Yes, I think um, obviously it's a, it's a human game. It's an emotional game and I think we should never take away from the fact. But I think players have adhered to it this season more so than ever. I think um, obviously referees will get decisions wrong, but from our point of view, we'll be encouraging players to make sure that the referee is the one that they adhere to. Uh, Linda, please. Hi, Craig. A, a Hi. week on, um, how's it feeling? How's the hot seat feel? Um, OK. Um, as I say, it's been um, an interesting week, but one that we've dealt with. Um, I'm comfortable in the surroundings that, that I find myself in, out on the training ground. I think this environment is, is quite new. Um, but it's been, I said before earlier, that uh, results have a massive in, impact on the environment. And um, obviously with winning, it makes everyone feel that little bit more brighter. And how much has changed in those four days since that, that win over Liverpool? N nothing really. We've got down to work. I've seen a, a refocus on the players, made sure. Listen, put that to one side, that's gone. Our aim now is, is purely on Hull. Certainly winning, you said it changes atmosphere, it puts a spring in the step. Have you seen that at the training ground the last few days? Again, I've seen it over the last season. Um, what I've stressed to them is they must back it up now. And Hull this week, what have you made of what the job that Marco Silva has done? Yeah, I think they had a, a big recruitment drive in January. You can see there's been a, a change in fortunes. They've had some decent results. We are expecting a, a very, very tough game. Um, we know that they'll come here buoyed by uh, their recent form uh, and we know we're in for a tough game. The game against Liverpool, because you'd lost five in a row, hadn't won in the Premier League in this calendar year. You were kind of underdogs going into that one. Everything is different against Hull at home this weekend. Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that as and, as and when it, it comes around. We know that, um, as I say, they've had a good change in fortunes. So have we. Uh, we know that they're not far behind us. We know that the importance of the game. You said that you're going to speak to people after the game against Hull. Have you had any conversations with the owners this week? I have, yes. We sat down on Wednesday uh, with the vice chairman and the director of football. And it was just a chat just to say, would you take the game for this weekend, which I agreed to. And can you tell us who's stepping up at the moment? Because obviously a load of staff have gone. Who's, who's stepping up to take on the roles? That yeah, no, we're, we're managing to cope um, as we are. I've got Mike Stell <coughs> alongside me. I've then got good support staff in behind that. The sports science here is first class. The medical department is first class. So at the moment, we're managing to uh, keep going. A year ago, you did a bit of media training on the pro licence, has it, has it all helped you be ready for this? <laughs> it's completely different to that because as you say it's uh, very much a mock-up and uh, especially Friday coming into that situation I think if we could recreate that at a pro licence that would be one hell of a event but um, we couldn't and I think there's nothing better than real life, I think there's nothing better than the scenario so I went away from it and there's probably things that I wished I'd have said better but again, it's about in life uh, hitting things head on. And, and I've said that to the players. They've got to hit this situation head on. And just finally for me, I've just been down the training ground. We had a chat with Wilfred and Diddy. He's, been, he's just hit the ground running, hasn't he? He's one of the few who are absolutely blameless the last few months. What sort of a, a shining light has he been? Well, I think he's, we've got more than that. I think um, he's won of a group of players, a squad of players. And I think his performance the other night epitomised the whole group as it is at the moment. And, um, you know, you saw his energy, you saw his drive. Uh, and for a new lad to come in, I think uh, we have to keep that going. Ian, please. Hello, Craig. Hi. Hey. Um, we saw the Birch for the first time this week. It's been a while since any of us saw him, frankly. Um, 
How how good news is it for the football club? Clearly, as an ambassador here, I know you used to seeing him every day in the lads down at the training ground. How much of a boost has it been knowing the Birches back out on his feet and cracking the same old rubbish jokes? Yeah, it, we've missed him down the training ground. In all honesty, I've spoke to him on the phone. Um, it'd be lovely for him to pop down to the training ground. That would be one of my jobs is to to remind him. You know, he's more than welcome down there any time. We miss his rubbish jokes. We miss his banter. Um, and so it would be nice to see him back down at the training ground as soon as possible. How are things down at the training ground? Are the lads calling you gaffer yet? A few in terms of the banter, but I just brush it off and uh, I just remind them it's shaky for now. Um, you said earlier on that you were still learning and that you're enjoying the learning experience. What do you think you're learning or you've learned in the last seven days? Again, I think I've learned a lot about myself in terms of uh, my weaknesses as well as my strengths. Um, I think you have to be self-analytical. I think you have to look at it because we ask the players to improve. I think uh, as coaches, we're always trying to improve. Have the players said anything to you about the job? Is there a, a clamouring for you to get it permanently no, in the ranks? No, there's been no talk of it and uh, I probably wouldn't expect that. I want them to focus on their training. I want them to focus on the, the game in hand uh, and that's the most important thing. What qualities do you bring to the role at the moment, do you think? Again, I, I think that's for other people to see. I, I can only be myself. Um, and that's what I want to be. I think it's for other people to decide what qualities I've got and whether they are the right qualities. And what effect could a win have for you tomorrow in terms of your position, do you think? I mean, with two wins on the spin, they couldn't take it off you, could they? Um, again, I think it's, I'm quite comfortable with the situation. I know what the remit is, is to try and get three points against Hull. Um, we said we'd speak after that, and at the moment I'm very, very comfortable with it. Um, I'm fascinated pre-match against Liverpool, and I wasn't at the game, so apologies, I've, I've caught up, well done. Um, there was talk of a formation change, there was a suggestion that you were you were maybe going to play 4-2-3-1 and, and had a chat with some of the players and it was changed to 4-4-2, if that's incorrect, apologies. But um, what does that demonstrate about the, the strength of character of some of the players in there, if indeed that's the case, in a positive way? It's incorrect. But, apologies um, then. Apologies accepted. Um, I think uh, in terms of formations, it's always about the players. And I think when you're in possession and when you're out possession, there's a change of formations. And I think uh, it was a, just a stress of what we need to be good at on that particular night. Um, Leo Joe is clearly available for selection. You've said everyone's fit and, and ready to go. I'm, a, I'm assuming he said that he will play and that he's keen to play at the moment, given what happened in January. Yes, I think given what happened in January... He, he was always going to be included, whatever. It was just a case of him getting fit. He was only fit just before the Liverpool game. So he came back into the fold, he came back into the squad and he's raring to go. No Ahmed Moussa on Monday night, Craig. Was that a tactical thing or was it an injury? Yes, it was just tactical. Um, and you come up against one of your former clubs tomorrow. Is there going to be anything extra in that, do you think, with, with you having... An assistant manager up there? No, I think it's vitally important whoever you play against, you try and get the three points and whether you've spent 10 years there or two weeks, I think um, the winning mentality has to be there from us, from everybody. And finally, there's a bit of a break in between Hull at home and then uh, Seville in the in the Champions League. Are there any plans for, for you, for the players to, to get yeah, away? We're going to take them away for a few days. Um, it's been in the pipeline now for probably two, three months just from Christmas. I think um, we haven't had the opportunity with the African Cup of Nations, with the Derby game. Uh, we're going to take him away for a few days, uh, a bit of warm weather training. Um, I'm very happy with that, very pleased with that. It's something the owners have wanted to do for a while. I think um, if you talk about last season, in terms of the togetherness and how they socialised and went out for meals, they just haven't been able to do that this season with the amount of games, the Champion League, the FA Cup. So it's a good opportunity for us to get together as a team. Any fancy dress trips planned or anything? Any more teenage new No. No? No. Uh, good luck at the weekend. Thank you. Uh, Pat? Thank you. We'll do a few more um, for, for today and then we'll, we'll move on. But Pat and Andrew will come to you as well. Thank you. Craig, bearing in mind that you, you're saying we're going to go away for a few days, that indicates that you're still in, in the frame firmly, irrespective of who gets the job early in the early part of the week, perhaps? Well, I'm going to switch my phone off after the game. So, uh, no, I think it's, it's going to be Sunday to Wednesday. I think um, the idea is they've said we'll sit down middle part of next week. So I'm quite happy with that. When you sat down with the, the key people on Wednesday, did you say eventually, in a polite kind of a way, by the way, my hat's in the ring? 
Um, Don't forget me. It, it never came up. And as I say, I, I think I'm there to listen to what their wishes are at the moment. And as I said, I'm, I'm very comfortable with how things have gone, very comfortable with what they've told me so far. There hasn't been a lot of dialogue. I don't expect there to be because I'm trying to prepare the team for the, for the next match. Human nature would be, though, surely having made such a good start, such a good impression. Surely you'd be happy to look them straight in the eye and say, mm, I'm here. Yeah, maybe, maybe after, after Saturday. The overwhelming majority of the people in the local paper poll, the Leicester Mercury, want you emphatically. Are you aware of that? I'm not, no. Well, I'm happy to tell you that's the case. Thank you. Well, is that not important, tapping into the supporters that they of want course. you? I thought they were terrific the other night, by the way. I thought they got the balance really, really right. I thought uh, they got behind the team. They showed their support for Claudio. I thought the balance was tremendous. And so, of course, fans' opinions and fans' values are very important to us. Well, you knowing that dressing room so intimately, having been beside them, particularly in two really crucial springs in a row with key players. Surely that, that knocks out your credentials loudly. Again, uh, uh, you can be my agent, Pat, uh, I think. It's, I think it's, um, I'm, I'm very, very comfortable, as I've said on numerous occasions now, with the way things are going and, and, and the board will make their decision. And um, I'm an employee at the moment and um, I have been an assistant manager, as you said, for a long time. And whatever they decide, I'll have to then sit down and have a think. Hypothetically, and don't we love such questions in football, yes. would you be a number two if you approved of the guy who came in to be the number one? Well, I don't know who the number one is. So it's hypothetic. hypothetical. I did say hypothetically. Yeah, it's a very hypothetical Have you answer. ruled out, have you ruled out if you didn't get the job, assistant? I wouldn't rule anything out. Right. This game against Hull, is it a six-pointer, nine-pointer, 12-pointer? No, I think it's a three points. I think um, when you get to the end of the season, I think there's still enough games. But I, I said before, I want to get back-to-back -back wins. The players want to get back-to-back -back wins. We know it's a big game. We know it's a big occasion. Um, and, the, and the focus has to be on the three points. Jeffrey Boycott would be very proud of that blocking. Well done, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> Cup from Ange and then anything else for today and then we'll, we'll go on to tomorrow. Easier questions from me, Shaky, don't worry. Um, having been number two for so long, Shaky, how much did you relish that opportunity to be the man making the decisions to be the man in charge? Again, I think um, I've had input, obviously, in team selections before and things like that. I think the difference is standing in the touchline area on your own, having to make them decisions. And, um, you know, second half when Liverpool changed the shape and you have to think, right, the onus is on you now. And, and that's why I, I decided to bring an extra midfield player. So I think as a football coach, as a football person, it's the game that really makes you alive and it's decision making in those games that are crucial uh, and it's something I, I do enjoy. Given how that game went, given that performance, how did you feel after that result and how much would you relish an opportunity if you were given the chance to do this for a longer term? In truth, shattered. I think emotionally, everything like that. I think it's different when you play, you become physically tired after games. Uh, as a coach, as a manager, it's definitely more of a mental thing because then you have to get your head on to talk to yourselves again after the game. You want to address players, so there's, there's, a, very, there's a lot going on. How much would you like the job? Again, I'm comfortable with the situation as it is at the moment. Thank you. Craig, just one from me. I mean, brilliant stuff on Monday, but can you understand some of the criticism that these players who, who essentially didn't come up with the results and, and ended up with Claudio losing his job, then put in a performance that we haven't seen. I know there have been bits this season, but nothing to the extent that we saw on Monday. Can you understand that criticism? Well, again, I think uh, we, we're human beings. We, we had to accept that criticism, take it on the chin. But the biggest thing I asked them to do was respond. And I think we, in, in life you have to respond. And if they hadn't responded in any other way, I think they'd have had more criticism. So I think they were in a no-win situation. I think they handled themselves brilliantly. Uh, but as I stressed before, I, we want the three points against Hull now to back it up. Thank you.